I, King Arthur, shall pull this sword from this stone and prove my royal lineage. <coughs> we shall never speak of this again. Welcome to the educational half of Rum and Board. This is Medieval May. Let's learn how to play Shadows Over Camelot. Shadows Over Camelot was one of the first modern cooperative board games, and it's still a good one. Team up to battle the forces of evil and complete a veritable buttload of Arthurian quests. But watch out. There may be a traitor in your midst, jonesing to ruin your day. In Shadows Over Camelot, you are one of the gallant and beautiful Knights of the Round Table. Camelot has fallen under hard times, and it'll be your job to successfully complete quests to restore order to the realm. And get some sweet fame and glorious loot in the process. Of course, you'll spend plenty of time discussing with your fellow knights which actions to take, and casting suspicions upon the actions of others. Unlike other cooperative board games, Shadows Over Camelot prevents even I, King Arthur, from calling all the shots, because you have to keep your hand secret. No talking about what cards you have. Instead, you'll make vague allusions to the contents of your hand, by describing the eagerness of your forces, how pious you're feeling today, or whether Merlin's had a hearty breakfast. As I said, in this game you'll spend most of your time working on quests. As quests finish, you'll add swords to the round table to signify the overall state of the realm. White swords for successfully completed quests, and black swords for failed quests. If you can get enough white swords, you'll win the game! But remember, one of the players may secretly be a traitor, and they only win if they make the rest of the loyal knights lose. Setting up for war! Lay out the main board, as well as the three extra quest boards, one each for the Holy Grail quest, Excalibur quest, and Lancelot's armor quest. These can go in any orientation. Choose whatever is convenient for your table. Set up the Saxons near the beach, the Picts near the forest, and the swords, siege engines, and siege engine die near the board. Place Lancelot's armor, Excalibur, and the Holy Grail on their respective quests. Make sure to reserve a place for the white and black discard piles. Randomly assign each player a knight and give them the associated player board, minifig, and color-coded health die, which they set to a starting life of four. Then each player sets their minifig at the round table in Camelot. Now, give each player one Merlin white card, a powerful card to help them on their quest. Then shuffle the white and black decks and put them in their proper places, and deal five more white cards to each player to form their starting hands. Shuffle the eight loyalty cards, seven loyal cards, and one traitor card, and secretly give one to each player. Each player peeks at their loyalty card and then hides it back under their character board. The leftover loyalty cards go away. Keep these hidden as well. Finally, for setup, you'll receive an omen of the collaboration in your future. Each player selects one white card from their hand and places it face up in the middle, whereupon all players discuss and decide how best to redistribute these cards back to the team. Alright, let's play. Turning the Tides. The game takes place as a series of turns, with each player taking one turn at a time. On your turn, you will do just two things. First, you'll progress evil, causing something bad to happen. Then you'll perform a heroic action, where you'll attempt to do your part to save the day. Heroic! First off, the progression of evil, where you'll get to choose what unfortunate fate will befall Camelot this day. You have three choices. Draw a black card from the black deck and play it. Most of the cards in the deck are standard black cards, which bring quests closer to defeat. We'll talk about how these cards interact with quests in more depth later on. A few of the cards in the deck are special cards, indicated by the special card symbol. If you draw a special card, do what it says, and then cry lots of salty tears as you watch Camelot burn to the ground. If you don't wish to draw a black card, you may instead lose a life. If your life gets to zero, you die. Or you can add a siege engine to the field in front of Camelot. Once 12 siege engines are placed, Camelot is lost. You traitor. Now you must take one heroic action to try to make up for the damage you just caused. You have five choices. You can move from any quest location to any other quest location. A few quests are solo quests and only have room for one knight. 
You can do the quest action for whatever quest you're at, usually helping progress the quest toward victory. I'll go into more detail about how you interact with individual quests a bit later. You can play a special white card from your hand. Each player starts with one special white card, Merlin, and each player has the opportunity to draw more special white cards as the game progresses. They're usually really strong. You can discard three identical cards, like three Holy Grail cards or three Fight 2 cards, to gain one life. Like all discards in this game, they're performed secretly and face down, so nobody else can see what you're discarding, which lets the trader discard good cards without anybody else realizing. You can accuse someone else of being the trader. We'll talk about this action a bit more later on. To reiterate, you'll take just one of these actions. But, if you really want, you can spend one life point to exert yourself beyond all reason and perform one additional action. However, you can only perform each type of action once per turn, so your second action must be different from your first action. That's it for a turn! Once you've completed both your progression of evil and your heroic action, it's the next player's turn. And it keeps going around and around, forever and ever. Until the game is over. Nightly Quests. There are eight quest locations in this game. Camelot, the Saxon Wars, the Pict Wars, the Star Wars, the Joust with the Black Knight, the Quest for the Holy Grail, Lancelot's Bridge, the Tug of War for Excalibur, and the Dragon's Lair. Each quest has a reward for completing it successfully, as well as a punishment for failing it. Most importantly, successful quests will add white swords to the round table, while failed quests will add black swords. On all of the quests, except for Camelot, you'll perform that quest's action by playing or discarding exactly one white card from your hand. You can't just dump your whole hand in one turn. What do you think you are, a dump truck? The Lancelot, Black Knight, and Dragon quests are very similar. In each, your goal is to win the fight by playing stronger white fight cards than the black fight cards. Once there's a full set of either white or black fight cards, the quest is over, and you'll compare the total strength of the played cards. If your total strength is higher, you win! When you're playing cards on these quests, make sure you pay attention to the letters in the white card slots. Cards on the same letter must have the same value, and cards on different letters must have different values. When you progress evil on these quests, you may play the black card face up to share the information with your fellow knights, or face down, in which case you get to draw a white card as your consolation prize. When resolving the quest, if any of the black cards were face down, make sure you shuffle them together before revealing them. The Picts are fought in exactly the same way as the Saxons. In both of these, play white fight cards in order, 1 through 5, before black cards cause a full complement of Picts or Saxons to show up. If you finish first, you win the quest! In the quest for the Holy Grail, you'll play Grail cards from left to right, while evil spreads despair from right to left. If the two sides meet, the next played card will cancel out the opposing side's next card, and both will be discarded. The quest is successful once the whole track is filled with white Grail cards. And the quest is a failure if the whole track is filled with black despair cards. To find Excalibur, you have to discard white cards, bribing the Lady of the Lake to bring the sword to you. But evil progresses here, too, and is making its own offers. Once the sword reaches either the good or evil shore, the quest is complete. As a reminder, all discards are performed face down, so if you're the traitor and have a handful of great cards, this is an attractive quest location for you. Finally, if you're Netflixing at home in Camelot, you have a choice. Either draw two white cards, or go battle a siege engine. If you battle a siege engine, you'll get to play as many white fight cards as you like, and compare their sum to the result of the siege engine's battle roll. If you have the higher number, a siege engine is destroyed. Otherwise, you lose a health. A few more quest-related rules. Whenever a quest is completed, all knights involved are immediately sent back to Camelot, so they can celebrate their victory or drink away their failure, as the case may be. The Excalibur, Lancelot, and Grail quests have powerful relics that are awarded to the player who finishes that quest, even if it was a team effort. If a quest is lost, so are the relics. All the quests on the main board are repeatable. When one of these quests finishes, reset it, and it begins again. All the quests on the sideboards are one-time quests. When the Excalibur or Holy Grail quests finish, flip these quest boards over. When the Lancelot quest finishes, flip it over, and the Dragon quest begins. When the Dragon quest finishes, remove that board from the table. Once a quest is no longer available, any black cards drawn for that quest will spawn a siege engine instead. Lancelot and the Joust are solo quests because honor. 
but the other quests are the more the merrier. If a knight leaves a solo quest, all the white cards on that quest are discarded. What did you think would happen when you pieced out in the middle of the battle, fool? The treacherous traitor. Let's talk a bit more about this game's special sauce, the traitor. As you may remember, at the beginning of the game, each player was assigned a loyalty card. Out of the eight loyalty cards, seven were loyal, but one was the traitor. You're probably playing with fewer than eight players, so there's a chance that someone in your group is a traitor, but there's also a chance that there's no traitor at all. As you may remember, the traitor only wins if all the other players lose. Now, a few traitor-specific rules. As I mentioned before, one of the heroic actions you can take, once there are at least six siege engines in front of Camelot, or at least six swords on the round table, is accuse another player of being the traitor. If you do this, there's no going back. The accused player flips over their loyalty card. If they were loyal, flip a white sword to black. You can't just wander around accusing your friends of being traitors willy-nilly. It's rather bad for morale. If they were a traitor, congrats! You sniffed out the mole. Add a white sword to the table to reward your expert sleuthing. The revealed traitor discards their white cards, removes their minifig from the game, and flips over their character sheet to the traitor side. They'll continue to try to make your life difficult, but at least now they're a known evil. Revealed traitors still take turns. On their turn, they do exactly two things. First, they taunt the knights by choosing a player and discarding a random card from their hand. Second, they perform a progression of evil phase as usual. In general, you may not want to go overboard with your accusations, in case there isn't a traitor at all. However, if the traitor has managed to go undetected until the end of the game, they will flip two white swords to black. Traitorous. The fate of Camelot. There are so many ways to lose this game. First, and most obviously, if every knight on your team dies, it's GG. If 12 siege engines have been placed in front of Camelot, it's also over. Those little piggies are about to blow your house down with a barrage of flaming boulders. You also lose immediately if there are ever seven or more black swords on the round table. So don't fail too many quests. If, somehow, you've managed to fill up the table with 12 swords without losing, the game is over. All players reveal their loyalty cards and, if there was an undiscovered traitor, flip two white swords to black. If more than half of the swords on the table are white, the knights win the game. Merlin makes some fireworks to celebrate. We're the knights of the round table, we dance whenever we're able. Da, 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 da. I don't know the rest of it. All of the knights have special abilities. I, King Arthur, am regal in red. I'm the original bad boy, which means on each of my turns, I can swap a white card with another player. Sir Galahad is the attractive knight. He may play one special white card per turn for free. Sir Gawain is the studious knight. He draws an extra card at the round table. Sir Kay always gets the last word and the last punch. He can throw down any fight card once combat scores have been revealed to turn the tides in his favor. I like to imagine this as a mic drop. Sir Palamedes is part salamander. He gains an extra life every time he's on a victorious quest. It's rumored he once regrew an arm. Sir, I have a bad feeling about this, Percival may peek at the top card of the black deck before deciding what evil action to take. Sir Tristan may move from Camelot for free. He has the fleetest feet in the whole of Britannia. So that's Shamu's old carpet lot, the game where you need to meet your sales quota, but who's gonna get stuck with the smelly old Persian rug that's shaped like an orca? So that's bad news for a camel cop. Someone has stolen the oasis, and only you can solve the mystery and bring it back. In this game, your only friends are your trusty hump and something else, I guess. <laughs> right? <laughs> In this game, your only friends are your sunglasses, your patrol hat, and your two trusty humps. So that's Windows on a Macintosh, the game of straight shootin' and dual bootin'. So that's Shadows over Camelot, the group project simulator. Stay tuned to watch us go to a silly place playing this game with alcohol, but don't forget to subscribe to us to catch more sweet videos like this, and click the like button if you've learned something about a proper basis for government. If you have a hot tip about where I can find some unladen swallows, if you know what I mean, leave a comment down below. I'll see you next time, but until then, play responsibly. Achoo! Pika! Achoo! So just for that, Excalibur.